So the SDE geodatabase comes in, in three types. We have the personal SDE, the work group, and the enterprise. Both the work group and the personal are built around Microsoft SQL Server Express database engine. Now that's the free uh, version that Microsoft provides. Uh, it does obviously have reduced capability compared to the full-blown SQL Server. The enterprise SD geodatabase is built around a, a full-featured enterprise relational database system, be that Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, Informix, or Postgres SQL. Now, all of these types allow for two-way replication between them. So we can expand the use of this into a distributed data model. So we may have a core um, office, a corporate headquarters uh, center, which has our, our centralized enterprise geodatabase. It then feeds out to, say, satellite offices that may have two or three uh, people uh, that have work group geodatabases in the work group and the enterprise talk to each other they share data so as changes are made between each one they replicate those back and forth okay then maybe each satellite office has individuals that may want to work from home or maybe they're out uh, in the field working on a project well they could have on their uh, personal laptops or their personal computers a personal SDE geodatabase which again could replicate data back to the work group or to the enterprise so that all of the changes that are being made are consistently being updated and consolidated and then pushed back out between the various copies of that geodatabase and that distributed data model. So it allows for a lot greater flexibility than some of the, the other types. The personal and work group SDE geodatabase Again, I said it's built on SQL Server Express, which means it has some limits. It's not like full-blown SQL Server. It is limited to 4 gigabytes of total data storage. Uh, only 1 gigabyte of RAM and 1 CPU can be assigned. Okay, so you know, most computers nowadays far exceed those uh, expectations. And if too many people start hitting it, then obviously you'll see performance. I'll slow down. Now, if it's a personal SDE geodatabase, you can have a maximum of three users uh, accessing it at one time, so it does still allow for multi-user editing, but only up to three uh, connecting at any one time. The work group increases that number to ten. Now, that is because work group is utilizing ArcGIS server technology. The personal SDE geodatabase doesn't require you to have Arc Server. Matter of fact, it comes with uh, Arc Editor and Arc Info. So if you uh, have those levels of ArcGIS desktop, you have access to the personal SDE geodatabase. Okay. Work Group does support web editing. So again, through ArcGIS server technology, we can publish data to the web and then create applications that allow us to edit the data stored in a work group. Geodatabase. Now, the enterprise is, you know, it's the big kid on the block. It has all of the capabilities of, of all the other ones, but it's also powered by a true enterprise level relational database like SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, Informix, or Postgres SQL. And because it's an enterprise relational database, it doesn't have those limits that the other types have. So you're really, your size of the database is only limited by your hardware capability. So the more storage space you have, the larger your geodatabase can become. You're really set to unlimited users and editors. Okay. So you're not restricted by the database on, on, on how many editors and users you have. You're really restricted only by the number of uh, desktop or web licenses you, you may have. Now it does require you to have ArcGIS server. So unlike the, the personal SDE geodatabase, the enterprise SDE does require you to have a license of ArcGIS server. And that can be any, any level. Uh, it can be ArcGIS server basic, which is the lowest level of ArcGIS server. That includes the SDE technology. It can be standard which includes SDE and internet mapping. Or it can be advanced, 
which includes uh, enterprise uh, editing tools and analysis tools at the ArcGIS server level. Now this also brings in the ability not only to do web editing, but the ability to do mobile editing. So you can create mobile applications that run on iPads, iPhones, uh, Android powered tablets, window tablets, um, smartphones that allow people out in the field to connect and do editing of data and push changes up to, to it through an enterprise SD Geo database that we can't do with the other versions of, of the Geo database. So, so this one really brings a lot of power to your data storage capabilities. Okay. So what are some of the big advantages of a Geo database? What why do we really want to switch to it? and use it as opposed to the shape files. Now we've talked about a lot of these already, but let's go back and kind of review some of them. One, it allows for better organization. So it goes from a standard GIS organization that maybe uses shape files or coverages where some stuff is stored over here, some stuff is stored over there, uh, things aren't really consolidated into a centralized location, to this. So we can set up and organize our data in a single geo database and create you know, individual feature data sets and put our feature classes in there so they're easy to manage, uh, easy to get to, and easy to keep updated. It also allows us to put security uh, on these things so that we can control what level of access and who has access to that information within it. It allows for validation, the ability to look at our data and make sure that it's clean. And we have two different kinds of validation. We have our spatial validation, and we have attribute validation. Now, in spatial, uh, these tools work in, in all of the different types of geodatabase, but it does require higher levels of ArcGIS desktop to maintain and create these. So if we want to use topologies, or geometric networks, or relationship classes, we have to have Arc Editor or Arc Info. Now, what topologies allow us to do is apply rules to one or more feature classes that define the spatial relationships of those features. Things like uh, parcel polygons can't uh, cannot overlap, or there might there must be a manhole at the end of every sewer line. Um, roads cannot intersect, meaning they have to be broken uh, where they cross. Okay. So being able to apply those rules to our data, again, makes it uh, cleaner. A geometric network works on linear networks that have single uh, flow directions, so you know, sewers, water lines, natural gas systems. So I can create this network and make sure everything's flowing in the right direction and then find out if I shut off this valve, what happens to my system. It allows me to do those network traces and, and things. And then we talked about relationship classes and how we can then create those so that we tie two or more feature classes or two or more tables together so that if I make a change in one, it can affect or make a change in the other. Attribute validation. Uh, most of this is available at uh, all, all levels. So we have subtypes and domains. Subtypes allow me to group my data into uh, individual um, classes within a single feature class. Domains are those lists or groups of acceptable values.